No organization is responsible for the content of this video. All errors and omissions are the sole responsibility of myself, David Iverson. This video must not be your only source of information. Please attend official USSA educational opportunities. Please download official USSA educational materials. Okay, the topic of this video is going to be synchronizing timers. So I've got two timers, and so I need to synchronize them less than half an hour before the start of the race. So before the so within half an hour of the first racer starting, I need to synchronize my timers. Now this is now this is something that confuses people. Uh, if you look at the literature, it says these things must be turned on and have power going to them more than an hour before the start of the race. So we want to turn them on more than an hour before the start of the race to allow them to warm up. And then we want to synchronize them less than half an hour before the first racer goes. Okay. So now here I've got, this is going to my start, so it's going up the mountain to my start, this is going up the mountain to my start, and because I have the whole thing here in my, in my uh, room here, there's the inputs coming in to my start box. So we're going to synchronize using the start box. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to turn them both off. So switch off, press red OK, yes. And then it says external power exists, hit start to reset. And once again, I want to remind you that I'm doing this for my system. Your system might be different, but basically you have to have your little system that you're going to do um, several times. Uh, a day during your racing, so you got to know your system pretty well. And I go through go through a boot program. Now here's the key thing: if I just relax and if I don't do anything right now, if I'm asleep on the switch, it's going to just assume that I want to go right to timing, and so now I've actually lost my opportunity to sync. So. If I let, so that's the one place, there's one place during this procedure where I need to be on the ball and I can't be talking with somebody. So I have as much time as I need, as much time as I need, but right now here I need to have my fingers on the OKs and as soon as that backup comes up I want to hit green OK. Boom. Now it brings up my synchronization screen. So I hit the green OK. Now it brings up my now it brings that up. I always clear out my times. Then it says press any key. So I press any key. Now it gives me the time. Now I need to talk about time of day in another video, and I'll do that. Right now, my next full minute is going to be zero nine four eight zero zero. So I'm doing this at 9.48 in the morning. And I'm doing the same thing exact to everybody else. So I'm doing the same for both. OK, OK. And then it is 11, and it is June the 26th. And on here, 11, June 26th. OK, OK. Now it's waiting for sync impulse, and you, there's no way you can see that. So now I've got basically 15 seconds until my watch says 9:48. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now they are synchronized. And so then. I do a wait, then the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to test it after one minute. So I'm going to test my synchronization after a minute to see whether or not I have a good synchronization or not. 
and I might as well just go ahead and do that right now because we're not doing it officially. So right now, this one is reading 948.30.0178 and this is 948.30.0178. Six. Now, the rule says they must be within five thousandths of a second of each other. And these right now are within four thousandths of a second of each other. So that was actually probably not the best synchronization I could have done. I've definitely done synchronizations that have been better than that. But that is the synchronization procedure.